Hello YouTube modelers, this is John from the 40 Watt Garage and this will detail my build of the 58 Chevy Impala in the movie American Graffiti. This was originally an AMT kit, it's been re-released by round two. And the following slideshow will detail some of the things I've done to modify the original kit to represent the car in the film. This is the original interior tub and with the molded in detail and the molded in detail on the front seat but because Debbie loves tuck and roll upholstery this is all wrong so it needed to be shaved off filed off sanded off smooth and then so I could apply some half round styrene to try and duplicate the tuck and roll upholstery in the original car these are shots of the original car that details the vertical and horizontal stripes I was able to apply three or four strips of the styrene at a time, clamp them down, let it set up, and then I could move and apply three or four more and reclamp it, let it set up, and just keep moving on. The wood strips and blocks are to keep things from shifting or compressing while they're clamped to set up. Here's the rear tub again, but with the rear package shelf that has the humps in it true to the original. Well, the 58 Impala had the humps, but the American Graffiti car did not. It had a custom interior. So those humps were cut off and a flat package shelf was fabricated that continued the tuck and roll theme from the seats up into the package deck. Here we are applying the half round styrene strips to the rear seat area. Here's a shot of the real car with the tuck and roll and the flat package deck. Just about done with the verticals and storing, starting on the horizontals. Back to the front seat, just about done with the verticals and leaving the gap for the horizontal pieces. Here's a shot of the package tray that I built to represent the real car. It's flat with the tuck and roll upholstery. And here's a shot of the real car showing the what I tried to recreate or simulate. It's a piece of uh, brass channel that's been bent to shape with a piece of uh, flat styrene stock edge glued into it and then the half round glued to the flat stock. Here's a shot through the rear window and the other way I had to file and sand the edges to get clearance for the window glass to fit and for the body to fit properly. Here's the interior pieces that are in paint. And another shot. And the rear interior tub in paint. One of the things that I did was between the verticals and the horizontals I had scribed grooves and in those grooves will be red enameled wire to simulate the red beading that the upholsterers did to transition between the red and white pieces and you can see some of that here. And here's the interior tub mocked up and with bare metal foil on the floor because the original car did not have carpet. It had probably something like Dynamat, and I'm assuming that's to reflect light up onto the actors during filming. Here's with the door panels done in the bare metal foil on the cranks and stuff. Rear seat area with the Impala area foiled and then filled, and a detail shot of the door panels. Starting on the bodywork, removing the molded in trim that wasn't on the American Graffiti car. The original car had the four emblems on the fronts of the fenders, but the American Graffiti car did not have those emblems. They were filled and painted over. So here it's with the emblems filed and sanded off and smoothed. Here's the rear quarters. There's those four little chevrons on the body styling that blend into the bumper. You know, they don't exist on the real car, so they're gone on the model. 
Here's a detailed shot of the 59 Cadillac taillights. And also the Impala script on the quarter panels was shaved from the original. Here's a shot that shows that. And so they are shaved off on the model. Use masking tape to protect the trim pieces that I wanted to save from nicks or scratches while sanding. And here is the body in paint. It was a lot of fun to mask off the red. Unfortunately, that red trim, I could not duplicate the feathering. It's just too small of an area. And there is a ton of bare metal foil on this thing. And it is definitely a no-caffeine operation to do that. But I'm glad it, and happy with the way that it turned out. I'm very pleased with it. And shot with the engine compartment areas sprayed flat black. Shot of the chassis and floor pan and the 348 Chevy motor with the tri-power setup. Minimal detailing here, just some plugs and plug wires and a fuel line to the tri-power setup. The movie didn't detail anything under the hood on this car. It was mostly exterior and interior shots, so I didn't spend a lot of time on it. Did some weathering on the underside, some uh, rust and dust, and uh, that was about it. Those are wound some coil springs to get rid of the plastic clunky parts. Here's some shot of the finished kit assembled. These were done in a dark room with a flash. I think it kind of simulates how you would shoot the car if you found it or saw it in a parking lot somewhere. I think it turned out really nice. I'm pleased with the results. This was a fun kit to build. Took a little bit of work. Um, I'd call it a an upper advanced level kit just because of the number of pieces and trying to get the fit and finish right. Especially with all the chrome trim that needs to be detailed. But I'm happy with it. And I hope you enjoy these pictures. And I'm working on a American Graffiti Trilogy. I'll be building the Milner 32.5 window and then the Falfa 55.210 coupe. Again, this is John from the 40 Watt Garage. Thanks for watching and keep looking for future videos.